Hello, and welcome to another Kids Connect video, where you can learn all about the amazing world around you, with fun and educational facts and worksheets. In today's episode, we're going to learn about a remarkable structure in the human body, that provides support, protection, and the framework necessary for movement. Can you guess what it is? It's the skeletal system. Here's a question to think about while you watch. What do you call the bones that are remnants of structures of our evolutionary ancestors, but have lost their original purpose? Watch until the end for the answer. Let's start with the composition of bones before looking at the skeletal system, and the names of all the bones. Bones are rigid, hard, living structures. They are composed of a hard, dense outer layer called cortical bone. And the inner structure is a porous honeycomb-like structure, called trabecular bone. This is where bone marrow is found. Bone is really strong for its weight. Ounce for ounce, it is stronger than steel. The human skeletal system comprises the body's bones, cartilage, tendons, and ligaments, which account for approximately 20% of a person's body weight. The number of bones in the human body changes from when you're a baby, to an adult. Babies are born with 270 to 300 bones, that fuse with age. Until adults have only around 206 bones. Bones come in different shapes and sizes, and serve different functions. We have long bones such as the femur, tibia, fibula, and humerus, to provide structure. Short bones like those in our wrists, and ankles, or the carpal, and tarsal bones, for movement and dexterity. Flat bones like the skull, the shoulder blades or scapulae, and the breastbone or the sternum, are for protection. There are also irregular bones, like the vertebrae, and facial bones. Bones are rigid and cannot move on their own. Fibrous joints, sutures in the skull, cartilaginous joints between vertebrae, and synovial joints, like the ball and socket joint of the hip, and the hinge joint of the elbow, allow bones to articulate, enabling movement and flexibility. Ligaments connect bones together, while tendons connect muscle to bone, to enable movement. Beyond providing structural support and enabling movement, bones protect vital organs. The rib cage safeguards our heart and lungs, and the skull encases and protects our delicate brain. Bones have other important functions too. They are essential for hematopoiesis. What is that? It comes from two Greek words. Hyma meaning blood, and poiesis, meaning to make something. Inside bones, bone marrow creates red and white blood cells, which are essential for oxygen transportation, and immune defense. Bones also store minerals like calcium and phosphorus, essential for nerve conduction, and muscle contraction. While the function of the skeletal system remains the same for most people. You can learn a lot about a person by their bones, like their sex and ethnic ancestry. For example, the pelvis is generally broader and shallower in females, to accommodate childbirth. While in males, the pelvis tends to be narrower and more robust for larger muscle connections. In skulls, males tend to have thicker brows and more prominent muscle attachment points, while females often have smaller jaws and muscle attachments. And because of hormonal changes that take place during puberty, males tend to develop slightly larger and thicker bones compared to females. Forensic anthropologists can also use bone structure, and proportions of eye sockets, jaw lines, and nasal structures, to suggest a person's ethnic ancestry. How interesting is that? Bones are living things and are in a constant state of renewal and remodeling. Old bone tissue is removed by cells called osteoclasts, and new bone tissue is formed by cells called osteoblasts. These come from Greek origins. Osteo, means bone. Clast, means to break down, and blast, means to grow. Did you know the femur, or thigh bone, is the strongest bone in the body? And even though the skeleton is the strongest part of the human body, it still needs to be taken care of, with a healthy diet, exercising regularly, having good posture, being careful to avoid too much impact, and avoiding harmful habits. Now, let's see how many bones you can name. Starting from the top, cranium, or skull, mandible, or jaw bone, vertebra, or spine, clavicle, or collar bone, scapula, or shoulder blade, humerus, or upper arm, ulna and radius, or forearm, carpal, or wrist bones, metacarpals and phalanges, or finger bones, sternum, or breast bone, ribs, pelvis, sacrum and coccyx, or tail bone, femur, or thigh bone, patella, or knee bone, tibia and fibula, or shin bones, tarsals, or ankle bones, metatarsals and phalanges, or toe bones. And now for the answer you've been waiting for. Bones with reduced or no significant function are called vestigial bones. 
Some examples are the coccyx, or the tailbone, which is the fused remnant of the tail that our distant ancestors used for balance and mobility. And the wisdom teeth are the third set of molars at the back of the mouth. Cooking food and smaller jaws mean that these third molars don't erupt, are removed, or don't exist at all in some people. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this lesson, visit Kids Connect for fun worksheets on many more interesting science and biology topics. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to be the first to know about new content. See you in the next video.